there, and welcome to Unveil Your Brilliance with Angelique Kapoor here on the Win Win Women TV Network, where each week we explore helping you to break free from the illusions that are holding you back. My name is Angelique Kapoor. I am a conscious leadership coach, a best-selling multi-book author, and inspirational speaker, as well as your host. I'm also the founder of my coaching company, Oversight Global. Now at Oversight Global, we are on a mission to address the consciousness crisis in the world one leader at a time. The privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. Now, these powerfully intelligent words were spoken by none other than Swiss psychologist and psychiatrist who founded analytical psychology, Carl Jung. Wow, so brilliant, right? Now, as always, I'd like to share a quote with you that relates to the topic of our episode discussions, and this week is no different. On today's episode, we have an amazing guest joining us to share her journey and provide some insight on fostering authenticity in your relationships, especially with your children. And before I bring her on, again, just a friendly reminder to keep a lookout for our episode segments, our show pillars, which we make sure we touch on each week, and they are Brilliant Mindset, Breaking Free, and Brilliant Strategies during our show discussion. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our special guest for today, self-discovery and conscious parenting coach, Dr. Anjum Saba, onto the show. Now, I am so thrilled to have our guest for today here with us. Now, before I bring her on, let me tell you a bit about her. Dr. Anjum Saba is a keynote speaker, educator, coach, and the founder of Conscious Connections Hub. As a passionate educator and graduate from Dr. Shafala's Conscious Coaching Institute, Dr. Anjum Saba is a dynamic motivational speaker dedicated to helping individuals embrace their authenticity and design their own destiny. Specializing in empowering women, Dr. Anjum is a self-discovery and conscious parenting coach who is on a mission to catalyze personal growth by boosting confidence and instilling a sense of worthiness with a unique approach that includes rewiring the brain. She believes embracing authenticity is the key to unlocking our inner strength and reclaiming our power to live our lives to its fullest potential by challenging our limiting beliefs and breaking free from self-doubt. So get ready to be inspired and empowered, ladies, as we welcome to the show, Dr. Anjum Saba. Dr. Anjum, welcome to the show. Hi, Anjali. It's a pleasure to be here again with you. Oh, thank you so much. So today we are talking about, um, you know, really being your authentic self and how that affects your parenting. So I know you have an interesting uh, journey, backstory in terms of kind of how, you know, you got into the self-discovery realm and how um, that really includes the relationship that you have with your own children. So can you kind of just briefly, uh, you know, let the ladies know how you came uh, to, to, you know, discovering this and now being part of empowering other women to do the same? Sure, Anjali. Thank you for that. Well, yes, uh, you know my story and you've heard to it. And for all the other lovely ladies there, uh, I'm Dr. Anjum Saba and I'm a self-discovery and a conscious parenting coach and also a keynote speaker as Anjali has introduced me, right? So it all started um, through pandemic. You know, sometimes uh, when we hit our rock bottoms, they are blessing in disguise. So that's what exactly happened with me when pandemic hit us all. I started my preschool in the year 2011, and it was all beautiful. And I was really uh, looking forward at expanding my school. We had some great feedback from parents about the standards and the quality of education that we were maintaining. So when pandemic happened, we had about 1,000 plus students who graduated, and never did I thought that it would be end of something substantial that I was working towards and that which I had worked good for about 11 years of my life. So when pandemic hit, we had to sit back at home due to lockdown, doing nothing. And I had identified myself as an educator to such a great degree. I did not know how to handle this emptiness, which I felt inside. 
And along with that, the anxiety creeped in more and more because there was no income. And this started reflecting on my relationships. And the worst hit was with my son, because as parents, it's easy for us to take out our frustration and irritation onto our children. And they become our targets because we think that they don't have any power over us and we can do as we feel like or we can behave in a manner which kind of subjugates them. And um, culturally, we have been brought up in a way that parents are always on the superior side. Parents are always on the hierarchy. And we get the liberty to behave in a certain way. And that's exactly what was happening with my son. And my son being a real strong-headed boy, he did not take this quite well from me. He stood for himself. He fought for what he felt was right. And me being a very obedient child to my parents, this was something new that I was experiencing with my child. And since there were so many challenges and clashes with him, uh, the distance only grew more and more between us. Although I definitely loved my son, there was no doubt about it, but there was something really missing in this puzzle. And I started browsing net to understand what parenting is all about. That's when I stumbled upon Dr. Shefali's Conscious Coaching Institute. And when I look back, I can say it was one of the best decisions because this course really changed my perspective about life and relationships. It was through this course that I learned for us to raise our children, we really need to raise ourselves as parents. So it is not about fixing the child it, because there's nobody who is broken on the outside. We get triggered because of the wounds that we carry from our childhood, that we carry from the interactions that we had during our childhood or during our adulthood or during our adolescent years. And these interactions and experiences is what creates our mind or our beliefs, our thoughts to behave in a certain way. So through this course, I also learned that to change our external reality, to change what we are going through in our day-to-day -day life, we really need to connect back with who we are on the inside. So you need to go back to your true self. You have to uh, embrace your authenticity because that gets lost, that gets lost in our childhood. And it was a big roller coaster ride for me. It was a huge emotional breakdown because I had to let go of a lot of things. I had to embrace a lot of new things in my life. And I had to come in terms with a lot of new things about my parents and about how they have shaped my reality. So I would only say when you are able to accept yourself, and, or the degree to which you accept yourself is the degree to which you accept your children. So it all begins with us. Yes, yes, I definitely agree. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, story with us. I appreciate that. So a couple of things that came up for me was, you know, you said that during the pandemic, you really struggled with your identity, really, because with you not being able to work because of the lockdowns with the pandemic, you really kind of lost sense of who you were. So I experienced something similar when I got laid off several years ago. I really, because I had dedicated myself to my career and my work so much, uh, when it wasn't there anymore, I really didn't know who I was anymore, because that's what I identified with. And so I think that for a lot of women out there, that they, they kind of struggle with the same thing, you know, whether that be they identify with being a mom, because they stayed home and raised their children. And then when their kids become a certain age, where they're able to be independent, or when they leave for college, they go through the same thing. Um, some other women, you know, also get laid off and lose their jobs. Some women go through that when they get a divorce because being married and having a spouse is a huge part of our identities. So can you kind of speak to our identity and kind of how we know it as and how that really ties into being authentic? We tag ourselves to multiple roles and multiple identities being a woman. We mm -hmm. are mother to our children. We are wife to our spouse. We are daughters to our parents, our sister to our brothers and other sisters, right? So in the realm of trying to 
fit into each of these roles, we truly forget who we are. Uh -huh. We have always learned to prioritize others' needs, others' wants, others' wishes, others' desires. The moment you start thinking about yourself, you have always been told that you are being selfish. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have never been given an opportunity to be who you are or even to take five minutes for your own self or to be for yourself. Mm -hmm. And we have grown, we have grown in a culture in the society, which speaks about always catering to others, always keeping others at first, not realizing when we run empty on inside, there is nothing much that when that we can do on the outside. Mm -hmm. When we are running empty, when our cup isn't full, we can never really fill anybody else's cup. So whatever you do as a mother or as a wife, as a sister, as a daughter or as a daughter-in-law becomes out of compulsion. You're doing out of compulsion. You're doing out of frustration. You're doing out of irritation. But mm -hmm. when you learn to prioritize yourself, your needs, when you take time for yourself and be there or identify who you are or what really matters to you, what your values are, rather than trying to fit into somebody else's role, you are taking care of yourself. You are taking care of your soul. You're nourishing your inner world. You're nourishing your true self. So when you try to do that, everything on the outside becomes easy flowing. You know, it comes out of love. It comes out of care. It comes out of the individuality by embracing who you really are without the effort of trying to fit in and please others on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. So in terms of taking care of ourselves and really that having that belief that it's selfish to do so or being told that it's selfish to do so. I know because I have a Indian mother-in-law that especially in the Indian society, that's something that's really huge. And um, I know that when I tried to talk to her about that, it was very hard for her to change her perspective. So in terms of, I know that you're in India as well, and uh, most of your audience are people from India. So what would you say to, especially women, who are struggling with kind of making that perceptive shift and that mindset shift about taking care of yourself is not selfish. In fact, it's selfless because it gives you the, the fuel and the energy that you need to be able to take care of your loved ones and everyone else that you need to be taking care of like you want to. So how would you, you know, kind of address that with them and start to make, help them to make that shift? And what are steps that they can take to start to take care of themselves rather than running on empty all the time? Well, Anjali, yes. Coming from Indian culture and uh, being a daughter-in-law is actually a huge task. We have been like, you know, bulldozed with a lot of uh, responsibilities and there's a lot of pressure for you to fit into every role that you take up, mm -hmm. right? And it is very uh, easy and obvious that you don't have time for yourself and and you just run errands day in day out on an autopilot mode and you you become autopilot to everything that is happening in your life and you don't even realize if you are burnt out or what is really happening because here the belief is no matter what what happens to you you just got to adjust you just got to move ahead right mm -hmm. it, no matter how I mean, like, you know, emotionally abusive it gets or mentally abusive it gets, you still got to accommodate, you still got to adjust, and you still got to carry that beautiful smile on your face and move ahead. Mm -hmm. All I can say is we really can never change the other. But we can definitely bring some changes in ourselves when we start identifying ourselves as an individual who definitely needs to prioritize themselves first. Mm -hmm. You really need to have some healthy boundaries in place, which sets things apart. 
which can help you to have the kind of dignity and respect that you need for yourself, without which you probably are a lost soul. Mm -hmm. And then it's very easy for everybody to walk over you, irrespective of who you are or what background you have come from or what is it that you really want to accomplish in your life or who you really want to be. So you really have to come up with the boundaries. Yes, it is going to be very difficult because not everybody comes with that open mindset to accept what you lay in front of them. But when you understand at what level of consciousness they are, you can definitely ignore and do the best that you can. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot make everybody happy in your life. You cannot keep everybody else happy you've got to take care of your happiness as well as long as you're not hurting anybody's feelings as long as you are not um, disrespecting or devaluating anybody and you are holding yourself you are holding space for yourself you should be good enough to go ahead and prioritize your needs and no matter what kind of chores or what kind of errands you run I would suggest take some time out and be for yourself. Maybe it could be start to start with just be five minutes for yourself. Give that five minutes. If you're mm -hmm. not able to give five minutes for yourself, then you're not even living a life. Right? right. So live a little, I would say leave a little. Enjoy and em embrace your own self. And from then gradually, you can start accommodating other activities in your life that you really love doing. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And that's how probably you will be able to fill your own cup. And when that is filled and when that overflows, and I'm sure it has a ripple effect because it's your energy that speaks to every other person in your family. So when you come from that energy, the other person is definitely going to like it and not complain about it. Right. So another question that came up is, you know, we're talking about prioritizing your needs and being authentic, but for somebody who has really been for decades, just really kind of running on autopilot where they're putting everybody else first, everything comes before themselves. And like I spoke about when I got laid off several years ago and lost my identity of my job title. I had no idea who I was. So for somebody out there, the viewers watching, how can they figure out what their priorities are or even start to begin to be authentic when they have no idea who they are? What are some of the first steps that you would recommend for them to really embark on that journey of self-discovery? Definitely, because it is it is not an easy process for mm -hmm. us to know who we really are or what kind of values do we hold true to ourselves because we are so ingrained and our subconscious level or even to the level of our DNA, everything is so deeply ingrained. We have normalized everything that has been handed over to us. Mm -hmm. We have accepted and we are on an autopilot. We, I say we are biological robots because we act as per our conditioning and programming that has been given to us by our uh, parents, by our uh, institutions, by our society and by our culture. So to break that, you really need to bring awareness, cultivate awareness, learn to be in the present moment. Letting go of your past, not being worried about your future, embracing present moment, developing awareness about everything that you do, about your breath, about what's happening around you, about how you are speaking or you are interacting with people around you. What kind of energy are you carrying? From which place are you coming? Are you coming from a place of lack? Are you coming from a place of abundance? So it is a lot of self-reflection, interrogation which really puts you into a place which is not going to make you comfortable for sure it is a very lonely world and it is very scary for you to embark onto something like this so if you have somebody who can handhold you who can mentor you who can take you through this or walk you through this process it gets to be very easier for you because a lot of judgment comes into picture, 
you start beating yourself up for everything that is happening because people will stop identifying you once you step onto this journey of self-discovery because you are no more like how you used to be previously. You are altogether a very different person now. Probably you have stopped. You have learned to say no to others where you always pleasing others. When you have learned to say a no, then people are going to definitely look at you as what's wrong. Mm -hmm. What changed? You're not like you used to be. You are a different person. What happened to you? So when there is so much of judgment and probably even criticism coming into place, you start doubting, am I on the right path? Mm -hmm. Is this what I really want to uncover about myself? So when there is somebody along with you, the journey and the process gets to be simpler and you start understanding what your values are, how those values are getting reflected in the outer world. If your actions are actually aligning with the values that you hold true to yourself and how efficiently are you able to execute yourself in whatever form or in whatever way you want to work? Is it really being replicated in the terms of values that you believe in? Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a process. It's not a destination because we evolve every single day. Right. Yeah, thank you so much for that. So let's tie this into parenting. So when we are talking about being our authentic selves, I mean, you you mentioned it a little bit earlier when you were talking about in order for us to raise our children, we need to raise ourselves first. So what does that mean? I mean, how does authenticity, being authentic to ourselves, play into our relationships with our children? Well, it's as I said, it's all about building awareness, building mm -hmm. awareness of everything that's happening within us and that's also happening outside us. So we are raising our consciousness. We are becoming conscious of everything that's happening around us. The kind of energy we are bringing around in our parenting, the kind of interactions we are having with our children. When we get triggered, it is always, we believe that it's because of our children. Our children trigger us. But mm -hmm. The triggers are always on the inside. They come from a place of our wounds. They come from something that is not healed. So it's an invitation for you to know what part of yours needs to be healed. What wound is getting triggered? So that's very important because we project anything and everything onto our children. Our beliefs, how we look at ourselves, our habits, everything gets formed very early in our age by around seven and eight years where your subconscious is predominant and your conscious mind is still in a formative stage. It's still not matured completely. So you pick up an identity about yourself. You pick up certain habits. You believe certain things and everything starts getting projected onto our children unconsciously. Mm -hmm. These patterns keep repeating in our parenthood and that will have a very different impact on our children because we want them to behave to act to be in a certain way mm -hmm. we always want our children according to the whims and fans fantasies that we hold true for ourselves we forget that they are altogether a different individual mm -hmm. and we have to raise them for who they are and not fit into the kind of mold we want them to fit into. Right, right. So when you start realizing what holds true for yourself, what unhealthy patterns you are carrying in your parenthood or in your own individual life, beliefs, do you believe in? How healthy are they? How empowering are they? How disempowering are they? So when you become, become aware of all of these things, it gets very easy for you to become a kind of role model for your children, whom they really want to look up to and where you possibly can like, you know, leave some good things for them to carry on and to hold on to. Because all we are trying to do by raising awareness and by raising a consciousness is to cause our children a little less damage to what we have already done so that they become conscious. They get an opportunity to be who they truly are 
where they are not compelled or where they are not uh, accepted, applauded or acknowledged based on their behavior, based on the kind of marks they score, based on the kind of uh, way they carry themselves, based on how they or probably the kind of status we want to have them for themselves. Mm -hmm. So this, we are devoiding our children out of all of these necessities and letting them be who they are. So, and this creates a ripple effect for all the future generations to come. Right, right. I agree with that. So do you have any final thoughts that you wanted to share with the ladies who are watching? I would only say, believe in yourself, believe in who you truly are, because that's the ultimate path for you to be successful in every aspect of your life. Because once you embrace your authenticity, you are accepting yourself for who you truly are, where you are letting go of the need to be somebody else, where you are letting go of need to please somebody on the outside, letting go of the masks that we put on ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis, trying to get validated from the others, trying to feel appreciated, trying to be a perfectionist or an overachiever, where we are only trying to identify ourselves in the doing world. So let's stop doing and let's start being. That's really important. So stop doing and start being by embracing your true self. That's beautiful. I love that. Well, Dr. Anjum, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your experience and insights with us. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me here, Anjali. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Okay, and that is it for today's episode on embracing authenticity in life and parenting with our special guest, self-discovery and conscious parenting coach, Dr. Anjum Sabah. I want to thank Dr. Anjum again for joining us today and for sharing her story and insights with us on fostering authenticity and how that affects our relationships, especially with our children and helping us to further unveil our brilliance. And I also wanna thank you beautiful soul for being here with me today as well. As I've mentioned before, I don't believe in coincidences and you bright light were meant to be here today to receive whatever it is you were meant to receive from this episode. So keep it up. Keep showing up and making progress towards unveiling your brilliance. Now, if you're here with me live, be sure to join me in the second half of the show for Brilliant Connections, where I get to meet you and get to know you, and you're able to ask me any questions you might have from today's episode topic or the show. If you're catching this on replay, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll check out our previous episodes as well on winwinwomen.tv forward slash show, forward slash unveil dash your dash brilliant, as well as join me live next week. Now remember, like the great psychologist and psychiatrist Carl Jung said, the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. Now don't let conformity keep you from shining your brilliance bright light. Discover and embrace who you truly are, who you are truly meant to be, and share your extraordinary brilliance with the world with us today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next week. My lady's here with me live. I will see you in just a few seconds.